Hi, good evening everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Cliff College Chapel, but I can't because I'm not in the Cliff College Chapel this evening. Things are a little bit different tonight and not how we had planned them to be for our evening celebration tonight. Unfortunately, a number of our residential students have tested positive for COVID and so our COVID plan is in place, uh, which means we're not together in the College Chapel. Uh, Mark Hammond, who's the Minister at High Street in Harpenden, uh, was due to travel to Cliff tonight to share with us. Uh, Mark has kindly recorded his message. And so we're going to continue on our theme uh, back to the 90s. And we're into Psalm 92. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to read Psalm 92. But I do want to welcome you to our celebration this evening. We will be sharing and worship from Leah and we will be hearing from Mark. So things will be as normal as we can make them. But we hope you encounter God as we worship together, that through the words of scripture and the worship that we share, uh, you will meet with him. That's our hope and our prayer this evening. So I'm going to begin in prayer and then I'm going to read Psalm 92 before we hand over to Leah and to Mark to continue to lead us. So let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather as the family of Cliff College, uh, some of us on the site at Cliff, others of us dispersed across this nation and beyond. Loving God, tonight as we gather, as we spend time together, as we listen to your word together, uh, would you meet with us? Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us wherever we find ourselves this evening, in our homes, in our college rooms, wherever we are, would you meet with us? We want to encounter you tonight. Speak to us through your words. Use your servant, Mark. Enable us to worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been journeying our way through the Psalms and we find ourselves in Psalm 92. So I'm going to read those words. It's good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. To proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord! How profound your thoughts! The senseless person does not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. For surely your enemies, O Lord, surely your enemies will perish, all evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have poured upon me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in an old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no wickedness in him. Thanks be to God for that reading from his word. I'm going to hand over to Leah and to Mark. Through the darkness, you're loving. 
Thank you to Ashley for inviting me to preach tonight. I'm so sorry that uh, I can't be present with you physically in the Cliff College Chapel. And my uh, thoughts and prayers are with those who've got COVID for a swift recovery. I send uh, your greetings from here at High Street in Harpenden as we look together at uh, Psalm 92. Psalm 92 is entitled, A Song for the Sabbath Day. And like all good acts of public worship, the psalmist begins and ends by focusing upon God. God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's love, God's steadfastness. The psalmist encourages the corporate praise and worship of God's people through the medium of music and singing. And like all good worship leaders, the psalmist does not seek to ignore or block out or deny the reality of trouble in the world. The psalm is upfront about the bad stuff being done, in particular, by humanity. It does not brush over the fact that evil and injustice and wrong are prevalent in the world. The psalmist acknowledges that evildoers do flourish, but in the face of that bad reality, also expresses the belief that ultimately those who do evil will fail, they'll fall, they'll be scattered. That in the end, all that opposes God's good purposes shall perish. How does the psalmist know that that is going to be the case? What evidence do they have for such optimism? Well, they are able to draw from their own experience and they give personal testimony that however grim the circumstances, they themselves have sensed God's anointing upon them. That when the going has got tough, God has given them the enduring power of the wild ox that they have sometimes witnessed and at other times have at least been able to foresee the downfall of their enemies. Then in verse 12, the psalmist refers to the righteous, that those who seek after God those who put their trust in God, those who follow God's ways, are like two particular types of tree. The first type 
is the palm tree. It says, the righteous flourish like a palm tree. Palm trees combine great height with phenomenal resilience. Palm trees are often found on coastlines and they have the genius for being able to grow tall and upright whilst also being able to withstand the great winds of hurricanes. So they have an inbuilt resilience to stand tall and survive the worst of storms. So the psalmist is saying that those who seek after God, those who follow God's ways, will not be saved from facing terrible storms in this life, but they will be given the inbuilt resilience to withstand them. The second type of tree mentioned in verse 12 is the cedar of Lebanon. It says, the righteous grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The cedar of Lebanon is renowned as being one of the most magnificent trees in the Levant, which is the region around Israel. It can grow to be 120 feet tall and can give, sometimes grow to have a girth around its trunk of up to 40 feet. And there are cedar trees growing in Lebanon today that were growing there in Jesus' day. 2,000 years ago. So the psalmist is saying that those who seek after God, those who follow after God's ways, will be given strength and stature and endurance. The psalmist then goes on to say that this inbuilt resilience, this strength and stature and endurance, is developed in a person when they are planted in the house of Yahweh when they are in the courts of God. In other words, if you want to develop these amazing attributes that will enable you to flourish despite the worst storms and troubles this life can send your way, then firmly plant yourself in God. Consistently abide in God's presence. Put your roots deep into God. The psalmist says that if you do this, then even in your old age, you will be fruitful and retain a certain youthfulness. The psalm ends by saying that Yahweh is the psalmist's rock. In other words, the psalmist has found throughout the storms and trials of life that the God of love is a firm, stable, unshakable base For their lives. So there you have it, a quick overview of Psalm 92, this ancient song of the Sabbath day. But what is the so what? What's the so what of Psalm 92 for you and for me today? What is God saying through it tonight to each of us? My gut instinct is that after two years of pandemic, many of us are feeling rather battered about. Perhaps optimism is at a low ebb. Maybe we even, some of us, feel a bit broken. Some of us may recognise that the storms of this life have captured so much of our attention that we've perhaps lost sight of God's steadfast faithfulness we've perhaps given up on those healthy habits that previously kept us rooted in God we perhaps stopped living each moment knowing the security that comes from nurturing and nourishing and holding on to the belief that Yahweh has come to us in Jesus Christ Emmanuel God with us. Maybe you are one of those wonderful people who sees the reality of much that is wrong that's going on in this world and you want to give yourself to changing the world for the better. Maybe everything within you is longing to see an end to injustice 
is yearning to see wrongs righted, is impatient to make a difference in this world for the good. And maybe you've been doing all of that with all of your might, but out of your own strength. Because you'd given God a try, maybe, but when the world did not change quick enough for you, you'd gradually drifted away from God. You took things into your own hands rather than handing them constantly back to God. The psalmist says to Yahweh, to the loving creator and sustainer of all that exists, to the one who has come to us most fully in Jesus Christ and says, it is good to give thanks to you, to sing your praise, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Whilst the psalm title says that this is a psalm to be sung on the Sabbath day, I think the psalmist is talking here about a daily morning and evening practice. So what is so good about this regular morning and evening practice of thanking and praising God? Why is taking time each day to focus on God's steadfast love, on God's faithfulness, so important? What possible difference do such daily devotions make in those who make it their habit and then go on to make a difference in the world around them? As I pondered these questions for myself, I was reminded of a famous claim once made by the ancient Greek mathematician and inventor Archimedes. Archimedes said this, Give me a firm place on which to stand and a lever long enough and I will move the world. Psalm 92 says to those who would move the world, in this vast and spacious universe, there is no firmer place in which to stand than in the presence of God. If you want not simply to survive the storms of life, but to thrive and to be fruitful and to make a difference in this world, then first get connected with God and then put in place those devotional practices, the daily habits that will thereafter enable you to stay connected to God. The psalmist is saying it is good to declare God's steadfast love in the morning and God's faithfulness by night. When you do this, it's not only good for you, it's also amazingly good for the world. It's a very good thing for this world if you are planted in God and therefore standing on the firmest possible place to stand to make a difference. So prioritize each and every morning, taking time out with God and declaring uh, in your own soul, for your own self, that however tough things may get in the coming day, as Lamentations 3.22 puts it, the steadfast love of God never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. Truly, they are new every morning. And also, prioritize each and every night. Once more, taking time out with God and recognizing God's faithfulness in bringing you through this day. God means for you to stand tall. God means for you to be resilient in the storms of life that assail you. God means for you to have strength and stature and endurance. God means for you not to be merely a survivor, but a flourisher. God means for you not to be merely an observer, but be a participant in the changes this world needs. 
God means for you not to be crushed by all that's wrong in this world, but to be in God's strength, a world mover. So for your own sake and for the sake of this world, make it your daily habit to be grounded and to stay grounded in God. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for creating and sustaining our existence. Thank you for your steadfast love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Forgive us where we have stepped away from you in any way. Forgive us where we have fallen back purely on our own resources, our own strength, our own instability. Forgive us where we have taken our eyes off of you and become fixated on the storms that rage around us. Please fill us with your spirit, with your very self. Please help us to establish our, our daily devotional life that we may remain strongly connected with you, come what may. Please help us to know and be secure in the knowledge that you are with us, that we are standing in the firmest place we can possibly stand with you, that with you, in your power, in your strength, standing rooted in you, we can be part of changing this world for the better. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much, Mark, for bringing God's word to us. Thank you for being flexible today. Uh, but we are so pleased you were able to share with us as we journey our way through the Psalms from Psalm 90 to Psalm 99. And for that reminder tonight that we won't be crushed if we stay rooted and grounded in God. So that's our hope and our prayer for each of us this week, that we stay rooted, we stay grounded in the God who loves us, in the God who holds us, in the God who carries us. Uh, so I pray that for you and I pray that for myself as we journey through what are, what are difficult days for all of us as we navigate this world in which we find ourselves. We hope to see you next week. We'll be hopefully be somewhere on the college site, uh, but do join us as we continue our journey back to the 90s. I hope and pray you have an amazing week. God bless. Thank you.